your tea and so forth. All right, let's continue. We started off on the whole thing about the uh, effectiveness model, and we're going to continue with that uh, currently. Okay, now. The first one was your desire, right? The second is simply dealing with whatever you have from the beginning. So whatever you see, you must also really see it right from the outset, okay? So whatever result you have that you want to basically come to fruition, like you mentioned about your dream, you have to see it in your mind it's already, okay? So when, when you ever do anything, it is from the beginning, you have to start with the end in mind. For example, uh, you sat on that chair, right? When you came in this morning, did you check the chair out? Did you have a look at uh, whether the chair is broken? Did you spin it around and so forth? What did you do? All you did was sat directly, right? But, so what does this mean? It means you had trust in the chair, you had faith in the chair, you had hope in the chair. Okay, so simply you trusted that chair and you sat on it, right? Now, the other thing is, if when you are traveling to a destination, whichever destination, whether it's your home country and so forth, all right, you phone your members and say, you know what, I'm going to see you at 5 o'clock in the morning. Are you there already? No. No, but you see yourself in this destination, right? So simply, what is this? This is faith in what? In the aircraft, faith in the pilot, trust and hope that you're going to reach your destination. So in the same light, whenever you start anything, like you want to become a communicator or you want to uh, complete your task and so forth, you must see the results long before they actually happen. So this is simply trust and faith or hope itself. It's like an athlete. You know when an athlete runs, what he does? <coughs> he starts at the beginning. He's already acquired the experience. He's basically been at this uh, training for a long period of time. So he is simply well trained to be where he is. So when he starts, what is it? He simply gets to the start line and I always equate it to an obstacle race. Have you seen or uh, watched an obstacle race? You know what's an obstacle race, right? Where we have the hurdles. Okay. We have the hurdles. Okay, this is an obstacle race and we have the finish line and we have the athletes standing here. Now, Long before he starts, he sees the end result. But sometimes in life we have obstacles, we have problems, and we should take this as challenges. So sometimes, you know, when we get to the start point, we look at it on your marks, when you look down, right? And as you look up, you still can see these obstacles that's in front of you. And the end point seems like you'll never get to this point. But you know, when you basically say, get set, and when the gun goes off, you start to run. And as you run, you jump over the <coughs> obstacles as though they don't exist. And this is simply your challenges. But as you run, you probably have somebody from another country, maybe from America or from Africa. Not everybody likes you. Some will say, oh my God, you cannot do it. And the others will praise you. Now, do you stand to fight? No, you keep running. Do you stand to say thank you? No, you keep running. That's how life is, okay? We keep moving towards the end point. And do everyone uh, win the race? Not everyone uh, wins the race, right? But even if you come out last, <coughs> it shows that you are a winner. Because whatever you start, you must finish. Now, I like what this man had to say, Martin Luther King. He says, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day my four little children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of the character, which means each one of us, we have potential, we have an ability to do something great. It's how we basically think about it and move towards this dream. You may, <coughs> many, many years later, although he was assassinated, that dream that he had became a reality in Obama. Okay? I'm not looking at the country, I'm not looking at the politics, but I'm looking at the words that were basically fashioned in a time of lots of chaos and marginalization and a black and white apartheid regime that people can still, could still come out and shine even in this day and age. So when we look at it, whatever you want, never ever say that the dream cannot become a reality. In whatever circumstances, it can become a reality. Then we're looking at the whole thing about goals. You know when you drive a car, you put on goals, right? Okay? And you put on aims and objectives and you go out to achieve these <coughs> um, objectives. The same thing now. 
is when you are driving a car and if the alignment is off, what happens? It'll go to the left, it'll go to the right. So in life, we need to put our alignment in order in order to move ahead and get to where we want to go. And when we look at it, we have to constantly evaluate our situation. Everything that we do, are we communicating well to our customers? Are we communicating well to our colleagues and our, to our superiors? Are we basically doing the things that's bringing out the best in us? Or is it depressing us? How many of you have felt like a weary weight, like the back of your neck, there's a lot of tension, okay, that starts to pull you down and as though there's a weight all the time? What? You're taking on everybody else's monkey and putting it on your back, okay? And it's keep playing and pecking on and, you know, kind of biting at your head all day long. This is the strain of life. This is the pain that comes upon us. But we, through the cleansing of our minds and being able to understand and know where we are going to, can remove all of these things so we can forge ahead. So when we look at it, what can we do differently? Remember, we need to assess our situation, okay? And we need to understand that we know that we know that we can move ahead and come to a place that we're not going into a pothole, but coming to a place of, yeah, you know what? The light bulb, when it came up into us, it says, Eureka, I have an idea. Every one of us, we have an ability to come up with something new. You know that according to statistics, one million people right now are thinking the same thing you are thinking. Do you know that? According to statistics. Right now. How many times you've walked out onto the road or went to the mall and you said, oh my God, I had the same idea years ago and somebody else is doing it. It's just that those people have stepped out in their situation and went out to do the things that they were called to do. They were the risk takers. And sometimes we prolong things in our lives because of circumstances and relationship and so forth. So what can I do differently? I know that each one of us we can make a difference in our setup if we first learn the art of saying, you know what, I can change. I can do something about the situation. Sometimes it's also patience. You know, we should not rush into certain things, otherwise we'll end up in the spot hole. But we need to come to a place where we are patient because the word patient comes from the word long-suffering. Long-suffering means to wait. And to wait is sometimes very painful, like the two-minute test. If there were not any interferences, some of you would want to say, oh my God, two minutes, is there something wrong with this form and so forth? Some people question it. But sometimes when we wait at the right time, the alarm will go off. And then, oh, we can move on. So when we look at it, just to quickly recap, when we look at the effectiveness model in any circumstances of our life, first thing is, we need to envision success. We need to see. And what is vision? Vision is simply each one of us we see far beyond this wall what nobody else can see. But because you sign the contract now, the contract that the company has, you have to share the vision of the company. You can't go into the bank and say, what, well, I come with my vision. Too many heads in one house, what is that called? Too many heads in one house, what is it called? It's called a monster. So one of the heads have to be chopped off, right? So you can't have two heads in one house. All right? You have to follow one vision. So again, in terms of you, get a clear grip as to what is it that you want. Then generate options. We need to make wise choices, okay? And again, what can we do? I like the word can, because the word can has two principles in it. One is, can I use the bathroom? Okay, that's permission. But can is, I have an ability or the power to do something. Like Obama said, I can, we can. Together we can. And then he went on to win uh, the election. Same thing with you. I can speak. I can write. I can do these things. But obviously, if you don't have the gift of it, you need to acquire the necessary skills to be able to do it. So, again, when you look at it, what can you do? Right? And then choose wisely. You know what's the problem today? Is that, you know, sometimes when you go to uh, the restaurant or for a buffet, you take a chicken, <coughs> meat, vegetables, and a whole lot of things. And what do you do? Uh, Usman? Usman? Usman. You go and sit at your table, and when you're about to eat, what does Miriam have? And then you call the waiter. And the waiter, what, what is she? I want what Miriam has. He says, no, you have it. It's just that it is dressed differently, or it's placed differently. We are always curious. We are always looking on the other side, but we don't realize that we have what it takes to do what we need to do. And then take action, all right? Just to recap. 
try something different. I'm not saying now go and use a completely different outfit tomorrow or say, yeah, I've already arrived and so forth. No, from the inner person, in terms of rearranging your schedule, in terms of in an efficient way so that one can become effective. And then lastly, evaluate your actions. Remember, feedback and evaluation is very important. Every day, before you put your head to rest, you should basically find out what is it that I've done today that has made an impact and affected somebody's life as it were. So, going forward, I am looking at what is the definition of communication? Who can give me the definition of communication? <coughs> it's like kind of uh, like uh, you can share ideas what you have in your brain or mind okay. just to uh, like uh, just to uh, to give just uh, like uh, can say what you can give just okay. put uh, going out just say out this communication like kind of this. what you acting what you feel is how to tell other persons. So basically, whatever you feel is what you express through speech or speech through body, body language or communication. Okay, anyone else? Interaction with others. Interaction with others. Anyone else on that table? Message. Yes, sir. Delivering a message. Delivering a message. <coughs> anyone else? Yes, sir. Sharing ideas. Sharing ideas. Okay. What do we do? We all need communication. Yes, Obviously, sir. right? Because it's one of the things that has enabled us to be where we are. Mainly okay. to, uh, to remove the gap between two people. Yes, again, so that we also can be on the same page or to understand what the other person is feeling or would want to basically transmit. Okay, so when we look at it, this is simply the definition of um, <coughs> communication according to the dictionary, right? It says it's a two way process. Okay, there's always a two way process. Okay, of what? Reaching mutual understanding in which participants not only encode, okay, you encode, which means you process the information, and you decode <coughs> the information, again, through speech, body language, facial inflections, sign languages, again, what is it? News, information, ideas, feeling, and it also creates a way where we share our thoughts, our meanings, and so forth. In general, communication is simply connecting people and places, ideas, and so forth. So what is it? It's transmitting the messages that 